been waiting, like feeding, to speak to you guys. I feel like we haven't chatted in like so long. I mean, like I did just chat with you because I filmed an entire video like a few days ago. Well, first of all, like I haven't posted in like two weeks. I spoke about this in the other video. This is why I don't like being out of order with my videos because I feel like every video is a new life update. But I spoke about in my last video, I've been struggling a little bit with my confidence in my hair because I stupidly chopped so much of it off. Like I think when you guys last, last saw me, I you know cut it short and it was all cute and everyone was like oh my god we love it short we love it short and then for some reason like i was spending too much time on pinterest and i was just looking at a lot of people with like wolf cuts and i was like that's what i want like forgetting that i don't have caucasian hair so like it's gonna be a little different and i don't think the cut that i was trying to replicate is giving the same energy that I wanted it to give. Plus we're also really in the heat of our starter lock phase. Like I'm a few days away from being one month starter locked. So we're real, we're frizzy, no retwist. It's a lot because I normally put a lot of co my confidence in how my hair looks. I kind of use that as my put togetherness. I, I feel fine not putting effort into my clothes if I do my hair sleek and then do my edges and all that shit, you know? So like I've been struggling a bit to like come on camera and be like, what the, what the, woo? I know you guys are gonna be supportive. You're gonna be like, Maya, it's fine. It's all good. Like, I know. Minuscule problems. We're gonna stick through this lock journey because once I get to my six month fully matured locks or at least halfway matured locks that I am just like, you know? Hopefully I'm back to being consistent. I have a lot of videos planned for April. I have so many ideas and we'll get into that also. Like, I am just, I've got the energy. I am like, it's 80 degrees. Okay, it's 70 degrees today. It's 80 degrees this week. There's two 80 degree days. Spring is here, summer is here. I wanted this video to be the start of my writing. I don't know what I'm calling it. As of right now, I'm calling it like the writing diaries or the writer diaries. I don't know, like, you know, everybody likes the diaries thing. But I was really shook when like a lot of you guys were saying that you liked the writing vlog and I was like, interesting because I've been holding back because I just thought nobody would care but it like feels like you guys care and lately on YouTube I have been consuming only two types of videos I've only been on booktube and authortube I've only been consuming writing videos and reading videos I'm getting more into the reading vibe and of course the writing vibe so I want to start this writer diaries series to kind of follow me along on this process of trying to write this goddamn book i also really want to get into doing more like reading videos where like i talk more about the books i don't have any current reading updates because i've been in a reading slump but that's for another video change the angles just so you feel like i moved but i'm not moving this is comfortable ha <sighs> we're still working on the last project the only project that and i haven't titled it anything because that's just how lost i've been on this thing like i am still in the development process no words nothing has been not even the outline like no, like we're still in the development process i was getting so frustrated because i was like bro like do i just not have a creative backbone anymore like do i not have the creativity to write this story the way i want to write it this was the issue that i kept coming to so i was kept like i've literally fleshed out half of like three completely different stories like where we went i think when i was talking to you in the first video this shit was like dystopian we're i don't even know how we got from this to where i am right now like i don't understand how we got here i'm just trying to let my brain articulate and figure itself out i feel like i'm having a lot of issues with like i know where i want stuff to start i know how i want these characters to be but i just can't figure out the middle and the end and i'm like babes like that's the book the middle and the end like i have so many beginnings and so many inciting incidents that's the thing i have these great ideas for inciting incidents but then i'm like from the inciting incident i that's where i've been getting lost so i bought this book this is save the cat writes a novel and literally every author on AuthorTube, author tiktok that i've seen has talked about this book and talked about how it has helped them astronomically with 
plotting their novel. And I was like, that is what I need help with. I need help with figuring out how the hell I just plot this thing. How do I get a good middle? How do I get an end? How do I get a novel? Okay, from an inciting incident, how do I get a novel? I've been going through this. I am really not even almost halfway done, but I've gotten so much freaking information. Right off the bat, I would highly suggest the original version was like Save the Cat something screenwriting, but this one is of course specific for novel writing. I highly suggest it already because it's already helped me so much. I realized my biggest issue that I was running into where I was like, I was having these characters and I was like, okay, this is what the character, this is the vibe of the character, this is kind of like their backstory. The main things that were stopping me from getting to the middle and the end was A, I had no idea what my characters want, need, fatal flaw, misbelief, all those things were. I didn't even know that I needed to, like of course like a want, like I kind of vaguely know like, okay, they wanna do this. But no, like you need to know your character's internal want, their need, and I also had no idea what the book theme was supposed to be. And every time somebody kept talking about like book theme, I was like, bro, like it's fantasy, what, what more do you want me to say? But like, no. I have now learned the importance of theme and I was like, bro, I don't want to be shoving a message down somebody's throat, but like that's not, like every book has a theme. Every movie has a theme. This like, and the theme is like basically the internal life lesson that the character learns and that the reader, the human reader can relate to. Like what's an example of a, now that I'm put on the spot, like I don't know an example. Like I was gonna say Katniss Everdeen, but like, honestly, I didn't even finish the Hunger Games movies and I've never read that book. So like, I don't know what decision, like what her life lesson was at the end. I could say like Divergent maybe for Tris Pryor. It's okay to be different. I don't know, but like you see like stuff like that, like that is necessary and that also helps you drive the plot and figure out things as it goes. So as I've been going through, they call it the Save the Cat Beach, Beach Sheet. The Save the Cat Beat Sheet. And basically they use the three act story structure, but like break it down in a different way. The three act story structure is basically just how a storyteller can decide to break a story into beginning, middle, end. But then they go more in detail because there's 15 specific beats that need to be, well not need to be, but that can be touched upon and like hearing these beats and like trying to figure out these beats has helped me so much in places where I'm like, where does my character go from here? Probably in my brainstorming process, I would get up to like beat five. Like I would literally, I would only make it through act one. My issue was figuring out how am I transitioning from act one to hack two? How am I figuring out, okay, this inciting incident happened to my character why are they gonna do what they are gonna do? And where are they even gonna go from here? What is this inciting incident gonna make them do? What is the plot? Who is the villain? Who is the antagonist? All of these questions. You see why I was so lost? This book helps you like clearly, clearly break all of that down. In this current stage of plotting, I've finally made it past act two. Like I have a middle. Right now it's a stupid middle, but like, I feel like just having a start is a start. I've just been running myself in circles with, you know, the Pinterest boards and the songs and like the character names and all this stuff. And I'm like, Maya, you have all this stuff, but you still don't even know who your character is fighting or what they need to do or where they're going to go at the end of this story. And that's pretty important. I also bought this book. Um, Save the Cat worksheet book. I just figured I need all the help I can get. I guess this one you can do like more specific exercises. I haven't even really looked at this one because honestly, this one has been really, really helpful. That was like the main takeaway that I've already gotten in. Also, I've been watching a lot of Abby Emmons is her YouTube channel. She's basically a writer, but she helps a lot with like teaching writing techniques. And she's always talking about knowing your characters want and their need and their misbelief. The misbelief or fatal flaw. Like your character needs all of these things because most of the time you're gonna be wanting to write character-driven plots. 
Like you don't want the plot to drive your character and then the character's just floating around and having stuff happen to them. Like, you know, like a dragon's just flying and they're like, oh, let's go. You want the plot to be driven by the decisions that your character's making. I don't know, I guess it just makes it more relatable. It also makes it more realistic. Let's say my character, I'm bad at examples. Let's say, okay, let's say you have a character that's misbelief or their fatal flaw. The law, the, the lie that they've been telling themselves or that they've been told is that they don't deserve love, right? Like let's say this is a romance or whatever, right? That's their lie. So they're living their life based on their lie. They're going about making their decisions in their status quo in their normal world based on this lie that they don't deserve world. Can I speak today? Like, is that something that's gonna be possible? They're going through this world based on their lie that they don't deserve love. And then their want is something that's based on this lie. So, damn, what does somebody that thinks they don't deserve love want? I don't know. That seems pretty tough. Like, if you think you don't deserve love, what do you want? you i don't know i don't know what you would want but like you see like that that's this type of stuff you figure out and then that want is kind of like the beginning of this story it's like what is driving this character and oftentimes they say it's like good for it to be like something superficial like let's say somebody wants um somebody just wants a promotion or they want a new car they want to be rich and famous like those are all superficial things. They're not your need. They're not what the character actually needs to truly be happy and to truly be okay with themselves. If their lie that they're being told is they don't deserve love, what do they need? And then that's your story. That's how you plot it out. And I was like, oh my God, you make sense. I'm just trying to get through that. Just trying to get from a beginning to an end. And then from there I can, kind of go more into detail i think i was doing things in the wrong order and i think there was there was one thing that i wrote down i don't know where it is because i don't organize my google drives could somebody tell me if scrivener is worth it if you guys are a writer please tell me because i hear all the writers talk about scrivener to organize stuff i'm thinking maybe notion but sometimes notion be look too complex for me hello no it's not that one moment please one moment please is it in this is it in this no no ah! that was the old plot no oh yeah i definitely need to be more organized with things because why can't i find what i need to look for this was also another thing that abby emmons kind of suggested that you write out for each of your characters and kind of see because this one's a more like open-ended it's, it's a little bit less specific, but it still helps you go somewhere. You write down your character's truth. What is the actual truth in their situation? What is their lie? And then what is the story? So like, let's say your character's truth is that love is worth it. Okay, like that is the true life lesson. That's what they need to learn. Their lie is that love is a weakness. Okay, so they're living their life thinking that love is a weakness. So the story is a journey of this character discovering that love and caring for people brings you strength. Like you see how just that and that just already, that just makes the story. And then you could kind of see that beginning, middle and end coming together. I want by summer vacation to just be writing. Like I want to be done developing and I wanna be writing that way like, this is all I'm doing for summer vacation.
decided to come inside because we've been out there for like hours. It's seven o'clock now, so the sun is gonna start to set. It's starting to get a bit cold, and I'm basically almost finished with the Save the Cat beat sheet. I'm at part 14, the finale. So technically like in my head, I've gotten pretty much to the finale of, I'm calling it basically like rough plotting of my novel because I think there's gonna be a lot of things that I wanna tweak and there's gonna be a lot of things that I need to change, but I've never gotten this far. Like I've never gotten to the point in this plotting and developing process where I even know all of these points that I want to to get to like you know what I'm saying this chapter or this this beat is a little long and then I have final image and then I'm done and then from there I feel like I'm just going to go into like fleshing everything more out like I think my goal it would be like again I'm a plotter so my goal would be to write like a very thorough outline of like point by point by point like that is what's gonna make me most comfortable but also I have this fear that I'm afraid of actually writing this thing because I've been doing little like free writing sessions uh, where like I've been writing like scenes of character backstories and stuff like that and like it's just not flowing naturally and part of my head is like bro like did I lose my ability to be a writer? Like, did I lose my ability to write? But I do think that it's because I can't see the end picture. Why am I so animated today? But like, I can't see the end picture and I can't see every, I need to be able to see every piece and every fragment and I, to know everything in order to be able to write the actual prose, I think is what it's called. Yeah, that's my hope is that once everything is kind of figured out that the writing will come more naturally to me and yeah, it won't be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I need a snack and I think I wanna eat a snack before moving on, but my house is not really like a snacking household. I actually, I just got into, guys, but I don't think I want this, but I've gotten a new, um, not addiction, I'm not addicted at all, but I've been into La Croix, La Croix. Um, and I know this is like kind of like fake bougie of me because I know like LaCroix are kind of bougie and I always like heard people talking about LaCroix and I would be like bro like shut up you're so bougie but like the idea of sparkling water that has a flavor but no added flavoring is actually so bombastic to me like this don't taste like lemon but apparently it has no nothing there's nothing in here it's just carbonated water and natural essence I don't know what that means, but like it tastes phenomenal. But I actually don't want that. Like I want a regular snack or like a tea or maybe like an espresso tea, like a coffee tea or a banana. I don't, what do I want with my life? Like what do I actually want with my life? Grapes, are these moldy? I can eat some grapes. First of all, my grapes were moldy, it wasn't a vibe. So I'm just gonna eat this banana. And I think I'm gonna try to, I'm just gonna bang out. Like it's not gonna take me that long to finish this. I think all of this has literally just been chapter two. Yeah, like I haven't even gotten to chapter three. For today, I'm just going to finish off at chapter two and then eat dinner and then kind of take a break because I think it's good for when my brain has time to like really like refresh and like think on things. When I was watching Abby Emmons, she was, I forgot what video it was, but she had mentioned this study that somebody had done about like imagination and basically the 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 summary or conclusion of this study was that like children from ages like five to like I don't know like five to ten or something have the most amount of divergent thoughts or like outlandish most creative thoughts that aren't constricted and then as you keep getting older the percentage of people that have divergent thoughts decreases and I was really like feeling that because I was like when I was little I was literally like pumping out story ideas that like looking back on them now I was like those were kind of like if we tweaked them a little bit like those made sense but like how did I come up with those like those were so out of this world and I think as you get older you start to take a lot of things into account like a is anybody gonna want to read this story does this story have relatability to 
people that are gonna want to read it does this have a market to sell like could this be like a screenplay like when you're older you start to think of a lot of things that can um quell that like radical creativity and i've been trying my best to not let my mind hold me back by thinking like you need to fit into this box or you need to do this you need to be fit into this ya category you need to you know do all of these things because i do think that can like frustrate the creative process that was just an interesting note i will continue reading Save the Cat Beat Sheet. And I liked this part, which basically is kind of summarizing the whole sheet. But basically, like the broad synopsis is that Act One is basically setting up a flawed hero, putting them in this status quo where they're living in their lie, they're living in their misbelief, and there's something in this status quo world where it's like, if I don't change, is that what it was? I don't know if it was that one specifically but yeah basically like your act one is your status quo your opening image this is where we see that the character is really flawed and their life isn't what it needs to be right now act two is basically the meat of the book like that's what you read on the back of a book that's the blurb like that's what readers come for that's like the longest part and it's more so like the fun and games and fun and games is like not necessarily fun and games but it's like the middle portion like literally the fun and games would be Katniss Everdeen entering the Hunger Games like this is what we came to see we came to see the Hunger Games we're finally in the Hunger Games or in Divergent it would be when Triss finally enters Dauntless and she's training Dauntless like this is what we read on the back of the book this is what we came to see this is what we're getting so that's the fun and games and then um so that's act two is mostly majority of that we also have introductions to our b story characters there's a lot of stuff in here and i feel like i'm not explaining it well that's why i really suggest getting the book because they differentiate between a story and b story the a story is the external plot that's driving those are the external actions like We'll continue using Hunger Games, but like, cat, like Prim being Prim's name or something being called. That's an A story. That's external. Katniss's B story is her internal. So it's like deciding whether or not her purpose is just to survive or if it's to defy the capital. Like that's her B story. So. Act two is where we get that introduction to the B story characters. Those are like completely new characters. This is normally where we find the love interest if you're reading a fantasy. Like Throne of Glass, this is where we met Kaol, Dorian. But I think specifically for Throne of Glass, if you've read it by Sarah J Maas, I think, shoot, what was her name? Her friend, her, her friend from the other place. I don't even remember her name now, but I think her friend was the epitome of her B-story character because the B-story character is meant to be the opposite of what, either the opposite or they're meant to bring out what your character needs and they're kind of supposed to like shine this mirror. Like they're supposed to be the mirror character or at least a character that helps the reader show, oh, like 
my character has the wrong wants. Like this is what they need. A lot of stuff. Act two is long. Act two is daunting. Act three is basically like approval of everything that we just did in act two. And it's supposed to be the exact opposite of where they are in act one. So like act two, is that true? But basically act three, at the beginning of act three, they're supposed to come to a decision that's more based on their need. They're now like act two, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Act two, they started their journey based on their want, still having their want in mind, their lie in mind. Act three is when they finally make a decision based on their truth and based on the life lesson they're meant to learn. And then you have the final image, which is basically just like, what did we learn? What did we learn here? And I liked, I liked that they put it into words because I've, I've always known how satisfying the final image is but I never knew the actual word for it or that it was a purposeful thing. I mean, of course, everything in writing is purposeful, but I think like, and the examples they use are great, but like, it's like the fact that Katniss Everdeen started out as a poor girl in District 12, and then she ends off her story, at least in the first Hunger Games, on the train ride back to District 12 as now a victor and a rebel. Like what a powerful parallel. Like, I love the parallel at the end of stories. They did this in the Mortal Instruments movie. I completely forgot the books. But they did this in the City of Bones movie, not Shadowhunters the show. But, you know, Clary starts out, of course, in her Brooklyn brownstone. And then she returns to her Brooklyn brownstone that's like, you know, disheveled and unkempt. And then she puts it back together with her magic that she's learned. And then she's like about to, you know, stay in this world. But then she like walks away and she's like, no, like she says something in the movie. I completely forgot if this happens in the book, but in the movie, she's like, I'm not a mundane anymore, you know? But like, that's such a powerful image when an hour and a half earlier, we were just seeing this regular girl that had not had no idea that demons even existed. And now she's standing in this same bedroom and it's like, it's like you wouldn't even think it's the same, like the parallels. The parallels are my favorite part. That's the Save the Cat Beat Sheet. Again, I would suggest getting this book because I haven't even gotten, there's still more, like there's still more chapters that will help with different things, but I think this beat sheet is more than worth it just, just for this. This looks like such a crazy intense meal, but it's leftovers from Easter Sunday, so like I didn't cook any of this. Well, I did cook the cornbread and the mashed potatoes on Easter Sunday, but I did not just prepare this entire meal. I'm gonna enjoy it though. Lately, I've been re-watching the originals on Netflix in my spare time. I haven't been able to do it as much because normally my mom and I want to watch something together and she is not here for the Vampire Werewolf show. But I've been liking to watch the originals because I think the Michaelsons and like all the characters in general are just the greatest characters. Some of the greatest characters ever written. Like Klaus Michelson is probably the best fictional character ever. Like the depth that is Klaus Michelson is insane. And I aspire to write a character or characters as deep as the Michelsons. So I like to watch the originals just to like, I don't know just to get some inspiration. My mom was like, I don't understand how you can rewatch shows that you've already seen like 18,000 times. And I was like, each time I watch it, I'm watching it for a different purpose. Like this is purpose is inspiration and education before it was entertainment. I feel like you could always tell a lot about a person based on which of their favorite out of the TVD trios. Like I think my favorite, I used to say my favorite was The Vampire Diaries, but now Hell no. Like, the originals by far is my favorite. Like, just the characters flushed out, the plot flushed out, the plot is driven by the characters. TVD is like, you know, it has its moments where I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, I never have that in the originals. Like, everything a character does, I can, I can trace it back to their trauma, their backstory, and everything, every reason. Most of the time, I don't understand what Elena Gilbert wants in her life, except for to make Damon and Stefan's life a living hell. So, yeah. And then Legacies was just, what, what was that? A disappointment. That's what it was. A disappointment. 
appointment. We are. I'm no ordinary girl.